So when we think about modeling classes in code, sometimes it can be beneficial to use this sort of model diagram that computer scientists have come up with a long time ago. First, we name the object that we're talking about, and then we have a section for its data, right? The data associated with class card should be a suit and a value, okay? The suit could be um, diamonds, spades, clubs, or um, diamonds, spades, clubs. What's the other one? Diamonds, spades, clubs. Hearts, that's right. That's a whole card game. Okay, so diamonds, spades, clubs, hearts, right? And then the value, the value. And the question here is maybe this is an integer. Okay, so let me come back up here on the, the video real quick. So when we think about value, right, I've got these cards here. Maybe it's, is it easier for you if I show them this way? Yeah, it's a little easier if I do it this way. I'm going to do it a little backwards. Okay. All right, so I've got these cards, right? I've got a seven. That's obviously integer seven, another integer seven. But then I've got this guy. Well, Jack is not an integer. In cards, in cards, we would consider this a value of 11. If we're just thinking about purely numerically, we, that cards start at 2. An ace in war is worth the highest value. Okay, so we would go 2 to 10. Those are cards we have, right? We have cards 2 through 10 in here. You can see we got a 10 right here. Okay, but then we have Jack, Queen, King, Ace. So how do we think about Jack? Well, Jack comes right after 10, so that could be 11. And then queen is 12, king is 13, ace could be 14. Remember, they start at 2. Um, another way of thinking about this is that you can give something a name, like Jack. And you can have a value associated with that name through like a key value relationship. That's one solution. Or you can just have the integers. To be honest with you, however you want to do this, it's okay. If you end up with a war game that works, and rather than saying jack of spades, you say 11 of spades, trust me, I'm not going to hit you too hard on that. I think it's interesting to think about the idea um, of how you might do that, particularly using perhaps a key value relationship. You just need to make sure, you just need to make sure that you have every numerical value properly represented so that when the time comes, if I need to say, oh, is 7 equal to 7? Oh, what should I do if 7 is equal to 7? Is 7 greater than a jack or is jack greater than 7? What do I do when this person's card is greater than this person's card? You need to be able to answer those questions programmatically. So when we have class card and we've got suit and value figured out, we need to have a repr method as well. And it should always return this string, value of suit. An example would be 7 of spades, jack of clubs, okay? Those are, that's the string you should be giving me back. I don't want anything else. Every ins or every card in the deck is an instance of the card class. Make sure you use the value attribute in comparisons. An example would be, if my card.value is equal to computer card.value, we're gonna enter that war state. Let's talk about the deck class, the only other class that's required for your program. A deck has one attribute, and that's cards. It's a list of all the cards in the deck. It should be a list of, um, in the beginning, it should be uh, 52 cards. That's 52 instances of a card class. Um, you might be able to use decks in other ways throughout your program. Different people do it different ways. You just you do need one instance of a deck, though, for sure. Okay? And then you should use random.shuffle to shuffle that deck. Create deck can be a method associated with the class or it can be a helper helper function but if you use create deck with the deck class no matter what you're doing if it's with the deck class or if it's a helper function it needs to store a full deck of 52 cards back into self.cards you're thinking how do i make how do i make a deck of cards how do i create the 52 cards in the card deck it's a tough question i'm going to give you a big hint for every suit and for every value, we need a card. You can have a for loop inside another for loop. So generally, how we write the structure for this program. This is important because if you don't follow this, it's going to get really confusing on Replit, like how do you actually use these things. You will probably realize after some time that this program gets pretty complicated. 
you're going to write a lot of lines of code for this this project. So something that all all professional programmers will do in, in that situation is we need to separate things across different files. True modern programs have thousands of files. You're going to have um, one or two files. So I would encourage you to make a um, cards or classes file. We're just going to do classes to make it real simple. Okay, so we're going to say classes.py. And in this classes.py file, this is where you're going to put class card. I'll pass. We're going to put class deck in here. Okay. Pass. So how do I use these tools inside of main where the rest of my code is going to be? Right? Well, I say from classes, import card and deck. Now, really, you probably won't need to import card from classes because really where you're going to use card is in the deck class. You're actually going to use the, you're going to build instances of card in your deck class. But there's a lot of ways to go about doing this program. So uh, I'm not going to tell you to do it just one specific way. Ultimately, what I want you to see is that as you're writing your code, you're going to realize it gets more and more complex. You should store your classes in a separate file called classes.py and ultimately import one or two of those classes into the main program for all the other functions that are required.